We are reading The Crossroads. This is the uh, sequel to The Only Road, chapter 1. Are you sure I have to go? There's only six weeks and three days left of school anyway. Jamie twisted the straps of his new backpack around his hand. I can help you with your work, Tomas. I know I can. The large brown building seemed to have been dropped from space into a field of cacti and scattered bushes that the locals called trees. The glass gleamed from the windows, and the stucco and brick wall still had that new, unbroken-in, graffiti-free look that made the whole building less welcoming. New in every way, but to Jamie Rivera, who was used to chipped cinder blocks and slatted windows, that opened and closed with a hand crank, this school building looked completely alien. Tomas put an arm around Jamie's shoulder, but kept driving down the two-lane highway toward the solitary building in the middle of the desert. On his other side, his cousin Angela shifted the new backpack on her lap to reach for Jamie's hand. I'm scared too, she said, just loud enough for Jamie to hear. They talked about it all week, Tomas and Angela, Mama and Papa back in Guatemala. Even Abuela had her one-minute say in it. Everyone agreed. The children need their school, and they should be granted or grateful for this opportunity. It's not that Jamie didn't want to go to school. It's just that going in August would be better than going now, today in the middle of April. Today! Only a week after coming to live with his brother, Tomas. Only a week since he arrived in southern New Mexico. A week since he and Angela had crossed the frontier into the United States. Tomas parked the truck in a big parking lot near the glass front door. These people really liked their glass. All right, the sooner we do this, the sooner you'll see everything's going to be okay. Jamie didn't believe him. He glanced at Angela and then scooted out of the driver's side that Tomas held open for him. With a second of slamming the door, Angela got out too. At 15, she was going to a different school, one ten minutes away in the middle of town. They'd driven past it yesterday when they'd gone grocery shopping. That school at least had character. With its old paint and holes in the fence, not like this prison with its fence all pointed iron rods and kept kids trapped. And if there was anywhere to go from here, they walked together, Jamie clinging to Angela's hand again and Tomas leading the way. Through the glass front doors, they came to another set of glass doors, which were locked. You need to be buzzed in or have a special pass to get through these doors. Definitely a prison. All the paperwork had been filled out already, and there was nothing stopping the inevitable. Even the lady escorted him to his cell. A young woman with dyed maroon hair was present. She entered through the locked glass door in ripped jeans and at least three shirts layered over each other in a punk rock sort of way. Hi, I'm Ms. McAllister. Do you speak English? Jamie understood enough to shake his head no. This is Ms. Macalista. Didn't miss a beat. She switched to decent Spanish, even though she was a gringa. Don't worry, the Spanish teacher is sick today, but I can help you out. Say goodbye to your dad and... Brother, Tomas corrected and then continued in English as he held out his hand. I'm his brother, Tom. At his side, Angela gave Jamie a look out of the corner of her eye. Tomas liked to show off that he spoke near-perfect English, and they were still not used to him being Tom. Mucho gusto. The lady shook shook his hand and continued in Spanish. Let's get him to class. You can pick him up at three o'clock outside the glass doors. Sixth graders don't need to wait with the teacher. Angela wrapped her arms around Jamie as best she could with a big protruding, with a big bag protruding from his back. 
The bones on her back stuck out more than they should, more than they used to. You'll be okay, she whispered in his ear with a sniff that she held back in tears. I wish you could be with us to drop me off at school. Jamie let his hands dig into her spine and wing, and wing bones. I'll be there to pick you up. Tomas hugged him too, and then he and Angela left the office through the glass door. The teacher let him watch until the truck was completely gone before putting a hand on his shoulder. Come, Miss Threadworth will be wondering where you are. She used a plastic card around her neck to open the glass, the locked glass door and walked down the vast hallway. Unfortunately, our school district doesn't have much money, the teacher continued talking in Spanish. It's probably too late in the year to get you a special class to help, with your, help you learn English, but hopefully it won't be too hard for you. Nothing Jamie saw seemed to indicate they were in a poor school district. They had plumbing and electricity, after all. On the contrary, it was one of the most well-maintained buildings he'd ever seen it had been inside. It looked just as new as the outside, with shining floors that would make you slip if you were only wearing socks, walls without chips or dirt smudges. Next to each classroom with a large bulletin board with the class projects on display, Maps labeled with all the states in the, in the north. Essays in English written in the best handwriting possible. The kindergartners showing off their capital and lowercase letters. When the teacher stopped, they were in front of a door with pictures of science project. Jamie gulped. He'd never been good at science. She knocked on the door and then entered without waiting for permission. Four rows of six desks was squeezed into, were squeezed into the room, where all but one desk was filled. Twenty-three pairs of eyes stared at him like he was some kind of alien. He ran his hand through his crew cut and felt the sharp spikes of too much hair gel. Come in, the teacher gestured, with her hand as he entered. Her voice was deep, with just... Those two words Jamie knew this was not a teacher to upset. What's your name? he asked. A few of the 23 pairs of eyes blinked and continued to stare at him. Which was the way out? Two rights and a left, and he'd be by the glass doors. He wasn't sure, just as he wasn't sure whether the glass door was unlocked from the inside. He doesn't speak English, the lady volunteered and then returned to Spanish. Mrs. Threadworth asked, what is your name? Great, now the owner of the 46 eyes thought he was stupid as well as alien, Jamie Rivera. His teacher continued in English, where are you from? He shifted from one foot to the other. If he told the truth, they might guess he didn't have any papers, but if he lied, he'd never be able to convince them he spoke good enough English to be from here. Back home in his regular school, he'd learned some English, but it wasn't like Tomas and Angela. Languages didn't come easy to him. He understood more than he could speak and knew what Mises had asked. Just as he had the first question, he forced his mouth to answer just to prove to them that he wasn't stupid. Guatemala. How old are you? The panic rose more than ever. He was pretty sure he understood the question. It was the answering he wasn't sure about. Twelve. As expected, all twenty-three mouths burst out laughing. Jamie could feel his face burning and wondered if he'd accidentally said a bad word. The teacher said something that made them quiet down and then turned to Jamie and something else, and pointed to the empty desk in the corner next to the window. He took the hint and squeezed his way to the desk. From the front of the room, the other teacher, his only Spanish ally, waved goodbye and left. The teacher continued talking and writing things on the whiteboard. He didn't even know what subject 
she was talking about. The eyes no longer stared at him, but the kids who didn't have books open that gave any indication of what was going on. Jamie glanced from the clock, only 8.52, to the window. Right away he noticed it was just a pane of glass. There was no way to open it. Back home, the school slatted windows were always open during the day to let light and in a breeze. How he wished for a breeze. Outside on the ledge sat an interesting bug. Dark, six legs, and antennae. If he dared, he would pull out his sketchbook and draw the insect. Instead, he traced the outline on the desk with his finger. No, not six legs, only five. One of them must have broken off. He was just adding pretend leaves to his drawing. When the teacher dropped a book on his desk and squashed the invisible bug, the teacher must have said something along the lines of, read this, and then returned to the rest of the class. Jamie lifted the book, but all he saw was an old metal desk. No bug drawing, and no more bug outside. The book was one of those first word books from, for babies that had a picture of something and then a word underneath. Except reading in English wasn't exactly the same as reading in Spanish. At least he already knew that horse was really pronounced horse and beard was really a bird. Still, he kept through at 9.14 and 9.39 until disaster hit. He had to go. Bad. Mises, he asked while raising his hand. Yes, Jamie. I go back room. He waved in the direction of the board and said something. She waved in the direction of the board and said something he didn't understand, but sounded like seen out, which didn't make any sense. Maybe it was her way. Maybe it was her who didn't understand. 9.51. Mrs. I go toilet. This time, what she said sounded more like sign out. But he still didn't know what that meant. He crossed his legs. 9.56.